and good evening. Welcome to part two and another episode of The Malik Show. I am so glad that you all have decided to come on and see about us. Well, it is part two of the one and only Praise 104.1's own Cheryl Jackson. She is right here with us on tonight. And we had an amazing um, first show with her. We talked about her childhood. We talked about her uh, upbringing, marriage, children, and all. So we're here on part two of the Malik Show with Cheryl Jackson. Show, I'm so glad to have you back for part two. So we are getting ready to get into some things. So I am looking forward um, to talking and glad to have you back on for part two. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> part two. Okay. So now we are moving on to um, a segment that we are going to um, talk about. Um, we are going to talk about Praise 104.1. As we all know in Washington, D.C., that is the number one gospel radio station in the DMV, Praise 104.1. So Cheryl, we had talked about Salisbury, Maryland, where you pretty much began your early stages and everything. Now I want to talk about Praise 104.1. How did you get started and how did you, um, just tell us what, what's the journey with Praise 104.1? Wow, let's start back. Okay, so after Salisbury, you know, I worked at WDIH. It was owned by Bishop George Copeland. Um, I have a degree in mass communications, um, and I didn't want to do radio when I came home because I wasn't, really wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. Like starting out, it was, um, you know, minimum wage and a lot of hours. I loved it, but and I was hit by that radio bug, but I really felt like coming from a small market like Salisbury and coming back home, D.C. is a major market. And when you talk about major market, you're talking population, right? Mm -hmm. So... You know, DC's, not, I mean, New York's number one, LA's two. So, you know, DC's a major market and it's a major hub. Um, and I didn't think I could do radio in a major market because I, all I did was small market radio. But when I got home, God divinely placed me as, at uh, Capitol Temple mm -hmm. under the direction of Pastor Ricky McCrimmon, of mm -hmm. course, the pastor of Pastor Ricky McCrimmon, the late Ricky McCrimmon, who was a gospel artist himself and pretty much iconic in the city. Um, in his young age. And I knew him um, because he used to run Revival when I was in Salisbury. And when I came home, um, I have a mutual friend. You probably, you grew up with Tracy Sykes and Tracy was my mutual friend who made sure that I knew where Pastor Rick was and where to go. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up at Capitol Temple. Well, they knew that I did radio in Salisbury. So of course he asked for an air check so he could hear the show and copies of the show. But what I did know is he was actually taking my air check to give to the late, the great Ray Edwards. Mm -hmm. And Ray was um, an iconic radio announcer here in the DMV at WOL. And Ray was, and, you know, historically he was iconic because he was the first ever to win a stellar award as a radio announcer. Oh, wow. Exactly. And he was personal friends with Dr. Kathy Hughes mm -hmm. um, because he worked on WOL. And um, he took my air check and gave it to her because Miss Hughes at the time just bought Spirit 1400 in Baltimore. She had just bought her um, Baltimore Cluster, which was 92Q, Magic 95.9, and also Spirit 1400. She needed talent for Spirit 1400. He knew that, gave her my air check, and she called me on the job. I was um, actually doing PR for an architecture firm. Mm -hmm. um, when I came home and it was a temp agency and I had just moved into their PR department full time mm -hmm. and they called me on my job to ask me if I would run and do radio in Baltimore. So I took it on part time. So I did Spear 1400 in Baltimore and then from there they um, she wanted me to also do gospel on Sunday morning, Sunday joy on Magic 102.3. Mm -hmm. So I was working simultaneously at both stations. I ended up leaving that job full time in Baltimore, promotions director, program director, music director, and um, part time job. So I had a lot of responsibilities. A lot. Left there, and I, was, I wasn't married at the time, so I could do it. I literally worked seven days a week, and I loved it. Um, left there, 
um, and came to, to Heaven 1580, which is WPGC AM. My longest stint of my career. Now, my bio says 25 years. I'm in, I'm in 28 years now. And so 15 years at PGC, Heaven 1580, ended up being program director there, developed the um, Inspiration brand. At the time, it was very new. Inspiration, as opposed to gospel, is also being able to incorporate um, urban music that have a positive twif twist, i.e., um, India Irie or Music Soul Child or Anthony Hamilton, who all have like inspirational songs, right? Mm -hmm. Mary J. Being able to add some elements of urban radio with positive mute, that, that's positive. And so we were able to create that brand for the FM. All right. After PGC, after PGC then um, I left there and went to, they hired me at Praise because that was the first FM gospel station here in D.C. So that's how I ended up at Praise. It was literally a two-year stint of me not working anywhere. Um, I had opportunity to go to Houston to produce Yolanda's show, mm -hmm. um, Dallas to pr produce now Erica's show. I had opportunity to even go to New York and work in the number one market at, WBL, uh, at WLIB or WBLS um, simultaneously. Um, but I couldn't because I was a mommy, right? So, and, I st and my dad, my husband was still in military and, um, and it was just not good timing. So God has blessed me to be able to still work in this market and still be able to um, build my brand and um, be known across the world. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, here are some pictures that I want to bring about. This first picture, um, let's talk about, um, I, there, I know it's plenty more, but these are just people that I personally like and know and you know as well. Now let's talk about um, Patrick Redick. Now, mm -hmm. as we all know, Patrick Redick is from uh, Norfolk, Virginia. He is a part of the Virginia Number no. 2 Church of God in Christ. And not only that, Patrick serves as um, one of the big time music people in Church of God in Christ. So let's talk a little bit, just a little bit about y'all's relationship. Patrick did a, um, you know, I, I launched my business, Cheryl Jackson Enterprises, in 2008, and um, and one of the things I pride myself on with the business is being able to introduce new talent to the industry. Mm -hmm. And so Patrick had just dropped his record, mm -hmm. and um, and I did showcasing all throughout the city um, for my 25th radio anniversary, which was 2015. Every um, month we did showcasing, and Patrick was one of those people. Yeah, if I'm that not mistaken, showcasing. that was at Ebenezer and. For Washington. It was. Well, the big, we did two major events. Like the whole year, we did stuff every month, mm -hmm. right? We did showcasing at um, lounges in the area. We did Society Lounge. We did, um, um, it's one, what is it? Um, Old Town Buffet. Not Old Town Buffet. Old, Old Town Inn. Um, we did, and we did um, an event at the Stellar Awards mm -hmm. um, in Las Vegas. And we did some, the big e event in Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that year was a big year, but Patrick came uh, to do one of my showcasing because I, you know, of course, we know everybody in Virginia too, and um, just watching him, he's a protege of Ricky Dillard, mm -hmm. and he's a part of New G, and he's um, a part of New, D New G DC, so he, he's a traveling member with um, Ricky and um, serves as an amazing um, choir director across the country. So it was my, my um, pleasure because of who he is and our relationship to be able to showcase him. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another picture. Mm -hmm. The one and only Smokey Norfolk. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the one and only Smokey Norfolk. Yeah, um, you know, I, like I said, 28 years in the business, so I have some personal friends, some friends. So. I remember when um, Smokey first came into the business, and of course I was programming Heaven at the time, and probably one of the first stations to jump on his record, and um, and you know just kind of follow him down through the years. And I think the picture that you're seeing now is us promoting his book because he became an author and of course a pastor in Chicago, mm -hmm. and um, and so we were we were promoting that as well through our company Cheryl Jackson Enterprises. Okay, mm -hmm. well here's another picture. <laughs> Uh, the one and only DMV Zone, Charles Butler. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about you and Charles Butler's relationship. Yeah, Charles, again, because I've been doing radio for so long, I've watched him grow in the business, like first getting started and watching his grind and the professionalism and that kind of thing. So I kind of developed relationship with him 
um, through that, like just believing in him and mm -hmm. um, him always being able to come to me as kind of like a big sister mm -hmm. for advice and then kind of loving his, the perfection of what he does with his group and being able to place, help him get on platforms and, you know, even investing in, you know, his um, records and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And so we just developed a family atmosphere, like a, you know, big brother, big, uh, big, big sister, little brother relationship. And recently, you know, Charles lost 200 pounds. You know what? Yeah. I'm glad that um, we're going to talk just a little bit about that because mm -hmm. um, the last time I saw Charles and talked with him, um, it was last October. And um, it was at Jericho City of Praise where the Clark sisters and mm -hmm. Charles Butler and all of them was there. And I had pulled him to the side because he had lost all that weight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he basically told me his story. So if you don't mind, um, what, what is your input on the weight loss? Yeah, we, um, we were, we, we actually, I endorsed a company called DeCala Weight Loss. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so Charles um, actually was asked to, to to be a part of that endorsement as well. So he and I both endorsed this company and um, and he just jumped in with both feet and just really began to change his lifestyle. And it's mm -hmm. just been so inspirational to watch his journey and to see how he's been able to bless other people, not just through his music, because he, you know, of course he did the record and make it, but then he also did the blood experience. Mm -hmm. And on the record, he talks about um, being able to make it in Christ and he felt like he had been a failure mm -hmm. at not, you know, uh, at his health and not being able to lose the weight. And so with this program, they began to help him walk him through the process. And what you were talking about was Spirit of Praise Celebration, which is our biggest event that we do mm -hmm. at the station. That was Spirit of Praise last year. Spirit of Praise this year, he's 200 pounds down. That's what he announced. Wow. The huge announcement of him being 200 pounds down and he still he said he still want to do 60 more pounds before he gets to his goal weight and um, he's just an amazing inspiration I've seen him minister firsthand to people who, who who suffer with obesity and just begin to you know talk about his journey and how if he could do it then they could do it you know as well that is awesome mm -hmm. well here's another picture that picture right there is a famous person. <laughs> that picture is the one and only Malik D. Shabazz Sullivan and Cheryl Jackson. And we took that picture um, at the Ricky Dillard um, January of 2000, if I'm not mistaken, 2016 or 2017. Mm -hmm. So that was His last recording. year. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was Ricky Dillard's recording. Mm -hmm. I like that picture. I said, oh, <laughs> I'm going to put that on the show tonight and have them talk about that. But must you all know, yes, me and Lady Cheryl, we've known each other for a long time. That's my friend. Mm -hmm. And I know she got a whole lot to talk, talk about me, but <laughs> no. I, I want to put that out there so y'all can have something to talk about too. <laughs> But never mind, that's me, y'all. But that, I like, that's one of my favorite pictures of us. But moving forward, moving forward. Well, I have to say, I'm very, very proud of you because you will take an idea, grow it, develop it, and, and create it into a thing. And I'm really proud of you from selling, from selling, you know, millinery hats and, you know, fashion now, you know, blogger and, um, now doing television, yeah, you doing your thing. You, you don't let people tell you no. <laughs> well, you know, I definitely been told many times, but you know what, God is awesome, you know, because, um, you know, just, just a little bit on me, you know, um, Cheryl, they definitely have said a whole lot that, oh, no, he's not going nowhere, this and that, especially this next segment where we're going to talk about before the show goes off. But God is good. He knows what to do with people. Mm -hmm. So I thank for what, he, what he's done with me. But moving on to this next picture, I want to talk about the Church of God in Christ, uh, an organization that is big, it is known. Um, but this particular picture right here was you were ministering three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, at the jurisdictional AIM convention of the Washington, D.C. jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ. Now, now that we have gotten onto that note, we're going to save the best for last. Um, there's two things I want to ask you. Um, you were, you're an evangelist in Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Not only that, you have served as the youth department chair lady, which is that picture that we are seeing. That's what your position was at that time. And you, of course, were ministering to the people. I want to talk a little bit about um, that and your experience with that. And also, you had taken a little step down. We want to ask about that. And also, I want to talk just a little bit about um, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years going within the Church of God in Christ sure. nationally? Yeah, I, I was um, jurisdictional chair lady for a number of years. I guess I need to go back and see exactly how many years. It started, of course, uh, Pastor Rick made me youth pastor. Um, actually, he just, it was a Sunday school class. It started as a Sunday school teacher, and then he, um, he appointed me over the youth department, which was very dear to my heart because his late wife, um, Lady Alfreda, has such a passion for children, and that's what she did. And so it was big for him to appoint me in that position. And um, and I do have a passion for kids and young people and the generation. And um, so, yeah, so it started there and then district-wise and then, um, you know, working as a um, jurisdictional chair lady, but then also our relationship with evangelist Joyce Rogers, um, being able to um, take her, her vision and passion and run with it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we were, we were chair lady. And then the only reason I kind of pulled back, again, because my mom was sick and um, she's been diagnosed with vascular dementia. You mentioned earlier mm -hmm. about the event we had at Ebenezer in 2015. On that particular day, she took a nasty fall mm -hmm. and um, ended up in the emergency room that night. And long story short, it turned out that she had vascular dementia. Mm -hmm. And so at the top of the year, she had a major brain bleed, which made me have to pull back. I'm her primary caregiver. I'm her power of attorney. So everything that I, I did at that point, I wanted my energy to be towards my mom. So I, I chose to step down and, and, and um, from the, from the position which our bishop allowed me to do. Mm -hmm. um, the re East region is such a close family, close knit family. Mm -hmm. um, I submitted resignation there, I have not heard back from them, so I am still officially in that title. Mm -hmm. And um, same on the national level because of my relationship with Evangelist Rogers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever she asked me to do, whether I'm in position or not, um, I'm definitely gonna do um, based on her being um, one of my spiritual mentors. Um, and I love her and I love her vision. So w with or without title, I'll still work in those capacities. Awesome. Well, um, we're 10 minutes into our show, but definitely um, some stuff is about to be squeezed in. Now, um, I want to put out there just something that we talked about. And of course, I'm going to put it on the Malik show because maybe it could help uh, someone out there. Going back to the McCrimmons, uh, we all know Ricky McCrimmon, the late Ricky McCrimmon, awesome pastor, awesome singer and all. But after his passing, um, the church was passed down to his sister-in-law, Jamie McCrimmon, mm -hmm. and um, his brother, Danny McCrimmon. And, um, you know, I'm going to just say this at 27 years old and as long as I can remember, I've always remembered Mother Alice McCrimmon, mm -hmm. such a sweet saint. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Pastor Danny, Pastor Jamie and all. Now, Cheryl, this is my next question to you. And I this part right here is to all the women preachers out there that's going to be watching. Trust me, you'll be watching. You ain't going to miss it. What do you have to say um, about women pastors and Church of God in Christ? And also, um, you know, I'm personally going to say this, and I don't take nothing back. Um, Capitol Temple now, um, Church of God in Christ, Washington, D.C., I noticed you know, very distant, very, you know, I mean, you know, I just, you know, we, of course we talked about it, but, and we already know what it's about, you know, I'm not going to put too much information out, but what do you have to say in your honest opinion about um, Church of God in Christ not accepting women as pastors? Yes, you can be an evangelist. Yes, you can be a missionary. 
Yes, you can be, um, you know, a state supervisor, but when you got women like Pastor Jane McCrimmon that was called by God to pastor, that, you know, I don't need any of these extra times, just pastor, and you just have certain ones that just won't give that recognition and stuff. What, do you, what is your input on that? You know, I love Pastor Jamie McCrimmon because of her stance and I follow suit. It doesn't matter, you know, who accepts your call mm -hmm. um, as long as you actively do it based on what God has said to you, right? Mm -hmm. So she respects um, those that are in official titles. And, you know, for the record, and, you know, there are women pastors in the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, it's all based jurisdictionally. So whatever your jurisdictional bishop will allow, um, and I know that they will go, to, you know, in Kojic bylaws and they'll say mm -hmm. that it's there and it's those that will, that, you know, will lead by the letter of the Kojic bylaws as to why they wouldn't allow women in you know, as a pastor, but there are some bishops that will ordain, there are some bishops, bishops in their jurisdiction that will support those, some bishops and jurisdiction. I mean, there are jurisdictions across the country that have asked Pastor Jamie to be a part of it because she is a female pastor, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that there are um, jurisdictional bishops that will allow it, but her stance is, you know, she's gonna do what God has called her to do, whether mm -hmm. you call her an evangelist, missionary, whatever it is you call her, she's gonna preach the gospel. She's gonna pastor a body of people, um, whether you give her the official title or not, whether you have her preach in the pulpit or on the floor, she doesn't mind, whether she's sitting amongst the first ladies or whether she's sitting amongst the, the pastors, it, she's such a humble woman of God that you have to follow that kind of leadership mm -hmm. because not everybody's going to accept you. Not everybody's gonna accept male pastors either, but not everybody's going to accept you and she, re she respects that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't hinder her from, you know, answering that call, saying yes to the Father. She didn't ask to pastor Capitol Temple. Mm -hmm. She didn't ask for it at all. And it shocked her as much as it shocked everybody else when Pastor Rick willed the church to her. Mm. So when willed. He, so when he was when before he died, he had a documentation um, that was submitted to our then um, superintendent, and it was Bishop John I. Little. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was Superintendent John I. Little, um, as to what he what he wanted for capital, and he willed the church to Pastor Jamie. And so it was presented at the time. Bishop Crudup was our pa our jurisdictional prelate, and um, we had a meeting. And as a member member of the church, and I remember him reading the will and what Pastor Rick wanted. Um, he appointed her as shepherdess over the house, he and Mother McCrimmon, as shepherdess over the house. And I know um, Elder Leslie Price was kind of like interim pastor um, up until the point of Pastor Rick passing, and they became shepherdess. And then after a while, the Lord showed him in a dream that he needed to move um, on Pastor Rick's um, request. So she, along with um, supervisor, now supervisor literal, were, were sent to Philadelphia to be ordained in our organization as pastor. And then when Pastor Sherman Howard took over as bishop, um, he continued that. He allowed her to pastor um, the church. And under our new leadership, um, who follows, you know, of course, the bylaws by the letter, um, you know, he was convicted not to allow it. And um, the church is now under the official name of our pastor, Pastor Danny McCrimmon. And, um, and she still serves as a senior pastor without the title because she's going to do what God asked her to do. And, and Pastor Dan, and together as they pastor as a couple, the church has, has, has thrived. And it's so amazing, to be honest, it's so amazing to see how God has um, matured and developed Pastor Danny. And um, again, together they make a, a great ministry couple for our church. So God knows what he's doing. That is awesome. That is well said and well put together. Well, here is our, with three minutes into our show, here's our next and last question for you, Cheryl. Now, we have been through, we have read the bio from first show as far as your childhood. We talked about everything from sun, from the rising of the sun. So... Let's talk about, as we get into our closing, what is next for Cheryl Jackson as mm -hmm. far as where do you see yourself with the remaining years of, you know, life, I mean, the next 10, 15, 20 years, 
and um, yeah, uh, well, I, preferably still in entertainment. Um, I would love to do television. Um, we do have, you know, with Radio One, we have TV One as an arm. Um, we have a, a really large digital component where we've already launched um, two separate shows where we do an author's corner and we do also what we call the beauty spot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so those are shows that live on our digital platform. And, um, and I love it because um, the way God has it is that we have the most digital imprints within our whole company, Praise 104.1 does. And I, I thank God for um, even showing them that, that we have that power of medium. So yeah, so I see myself conducting a show, um, television, I see myself still doing radio, um, whether um, on air or in, in the executive um, position of it. Um, and I really still see myself doing this format. Um, I've had other offers to do other formats, Urban, Urban AC, um, but I really don't want to. I really love gospel and inspiration. Gospel and inspiration. Well, and here's the next thing, um, Stella Award winner. Mm -hmm. Let's talk just a little bit um, as we are a minute in. Let's talk a little bit about the Stellars and your experience with that. I've been favored. I have um, three Stella Awards now. so. We have um, one for programming, one for as an announcer, and then just last year I was honored as a stellar woman of gospel. Wow! In the in the industry, so I'm I'm blessed. <laughs> Will oh, you right clap? Yeah. Well, let's. <laughs> I can't. Silly. Yeah, we got to clap. You He's know the silly. mics and stuff, y'all. Y'all, y'all forgive me. But that's awesome, though. That yeah. is so awesome. Well, all I'm, I'm going to say is this. If Kojic don't take any more of my money, I pray I can make it to a Stella Awards in Las Vegas. You just don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, I thank you all for watching the Malik Show on tonight. This has been an amazing show with the one and only Cheryl Jackson. Cheryl, I enjoyed your presence and enjoyed you being a guest on tonight. And this has been an awesome show. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. No problem. Well, y'all tune in next time on The Malik Show. Um, we have special guests from one and only D.C. own Pastor Altavon Clark of the Greater Praise and Deliverance Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. And their wonderful choir will be with us on the next time on The Malik Show. I am your host, Malik D. Shabazz Sullivan. Until next time, be true, be you. God bless you.